You ask about energy and how energy is taken. The stories for you from my heart. There was a man hiking in the mountains. He was alone. These were hot, sunny summer days, but he walked on a path high up in a cool forest. He was a simple man who tried to be clean. He murmured to himself, cleanliness is godliness. He was fit, even somewhat athletic, but otherwise normal. The man wore comfortable shoes, cotton shirt and shorts, not a fashion statement, but he made up for it with a radiant smile, rosy face and sparkling happy eyes. Well, perhaps the smile was not so obvious on the outside, but inside himself, that's the way he felt. His backpack was light, and he just had a few necessities that were just fine for his journey. He knew that there would be fresh berries to eat and cool brooks for drinking further up, just when he needed it. That faith, that balance he had reached within, were enough to carry him through. The joy of it, to be free, hiking in the mountains. What a glorious moment this was. He appreciated all the more because an entire life he had spent working inside in a stuffy room, building gadgets that seemed to give no lasting benefit to anyone. Perhaps Others had been wiser and more fortunate to have built something more long-lasting. Ah, the desire for immortality, he smiled to himself and looked around at the beauty around him and thought, strange, this fleeting moment seems eternal. The sun, the mountain, the breeze, walking on a beautiful path, filled him with the energy for reasons that defy explanation. He hummed a song, a tune that made him content while watching the sky, the birds and nature around while feeling one with it all. Up here in the forest, the sun shone and the breeze rejuvenated. Any sense of doubt, cynicism and the lies of a greedy world in the city just melted away in the woods. It cannot be proven, counted, or explained, but the feeling of well-being he had was undeniable. It was profoundly beautiful, all was in harmony, and it made him happy. One day, on the path, coming from the direction of the city, he saw another person walking up, a woman. She was alone. What a beautiful person! each thought. They said hello to each other, and they instantly knew that they would walk together. He had been alone, and it made him feel great to meet such a beautiful human being. A person he liked. She's like me, he said to himself. He was so happy to be able to share the beauty all around him. This wondrous beauty of nature shared with another human being who could appreciate it just like him and not be alone. Loneliness is a killer, he thought. For a while, the woman and the man traveled in contented, harmonious silence, smiling at each other gratefully. They immersed themselves in the bosom of nature, happy that they found each other and were no longer alone in this amazingly beautiful world. They walked. They walked. All is well in the world. They walk on the path, 
and she picks up flowers and gives them to him. He receives them with a smile. In his mind, he thinks that they look better lying right there where they had been and that the bees make better use of them. She takes a look at him with a flower behind his ear. She daydreams. He is handsome, she thinks. Exactly what I always wanted. Mm. But that flower is so beautiful. But his clothes, well, they look tattered she thinks. Hmm, those clothes will not do, she thinks. Not for my love. What if they meet another traveler? What will they think of her love? Worse, what will they think of her not taking care of him? The path passes by a town in the distance. The woman decides to surprise him. She tells him that she'll go to town because she craves for something other than berries, perhaps a rich and tasty cake to remind her of home. So they part ways for a while. He sits there alone and misses her while she goes to town. Maybe I should have gone with her. He ponders. She stops at a small, trendy cafe, enjoys a rich cake, and remembers all the comfort she had. She joyfully goes to shop for new clothes for herself and buys him these beautiful shoes, shorts, and shirt. She will have to work later to pay for them, but thinks he will be so happy and will look so good in them. A little later, the man and the woman meet again on the path in the mountain. He's so happy to have her back. She's happy to give him the things she bought. Yes, these clothes are fine, he thinks. He gets rid of his old clothes and they walk together on the path like two peacocks. They're so proud and well-dressed now. Should another traveler see them now, he will certainly know the man and his woman are prosperous and important. They walk on a path again, but the new clothes he wears don't quite feel right. The shirt is beautiful and contrasts the colors of nature but the synthetic material tends to cling uncomfortably to his back. But with a breeze, it's not so bad. The shoes seem to have a larger footprint than the old ones, and his feet don't fit between the rocks so well. But they certainly look better and newer than the old shoes. He trips again. The shorts are just too tight and he's more and more aware of clinging to his body. But these shorts really look sharp. Still, he wishes he had his old clothes back. No matter, he looks good. They walk on the path. Days pass. He's not as happy with the new attire. It's just not that comfortable. Besides, the clothes do not look as new anymore. She's so happy. She finally met someone she can truly love. He's tall. Well, not perfect, but tall. She says that every so often. She tells him he's perfect for her. He looks great, and he is hers. The woman is happy. It's so beautiful. If only she could somehow capture this natural beauty and keep it close just for themselves, you know, for when it's dark. She means well, there is love she wants to share with him. She notices little shiny rocks on the path along the brook that is bubbling nearby. 
they glitter and reflect back the sun and the pine trees. They seem to encapsulate the very essence of the beauty of nature. She happily starts picking up shiny rocks and putting them into her backpack. She smiles at him, thinking how happy he will be when she will gather enough of them for later. She imagines when it gets dark that they will take out the shiny pebbles and they will glitter in the middle of the night. He smiles back, not understanding. They continue walking and she keeps gathering and putting stones in her backpack. It's getting heavier and heavier. She's not smiling as much. She's tiring. She feels that she's doing something important and she needs help. After all, look how hard she's working on gathering rocks. The woman reasons that he too will benefit from these rocks alone in the dark. Besides, she is giving clothes and shoes. Look how much better he looks. He benefited. She thinks that perhaps he should carry some of them. So she starts giving him rocks to carry as well. He doesn't like to carry them and doesn't understand why she picks up rocks. He did not notice any glow in the dark. But he's so grateful not to be alone anymore. And she has done so much for him. She bought a new attire just for him. He agrees to carry rocks. Time passes and now both their backpacks are full of rocks. She's so focused, keeps picking up rocks, more rocks, different rocks, more beauty. Days pass, she searches for perfect rocks in the riverbed. The sun seems hotter now and the polyester shirt clings to his sweaty back. The shoes seem heavier than ever. They struggle to carry the rocks and they tire. So tired that they can no longer see the beauty around them. He no longer looks up at the sky and when he makes a feeble attempt to show her the clouds, she gets angry that he doesn't appreciate her hard work. After all, she's not even asking him to pick up rocks. To him, this rock picking and carrying takes him back to that indoors job he had years ago when he was young and had enthusiasm to work at the desk because he thought what he did had value. When he was young and didn't understand why he did what he did, he reasoned that he too was inexperienced and ignorant to understand. He said to himself that others were much more knowing and after all they were recognized, certified and experts with education and experience. They were licensed specialists. Except in those days, he was getting paid to do that indoor job and the money gave him a sense of well-being and he could buy things he wanted. Well, I'm carrying rocks for a higher purpose, he thought. He's now starting to pick up rocks too. He remembers other women in his past also picked up shiny rocks. He didn't understand. Maybe women like rocks. He knows that once rocks are removed from the river, they dry and lose their shine. The sacrifice required to gather, bag, carry rocks takes away energy and time 
from looking at the sky, marveling, laughing, making love. Well, living. He has doubts. Perhaps I don't like picking up and carrying rocks because I'm lazy, he thinks. He cares for her and is grateful to be with her. Because of the love she bears him, she believes that they should carry these heavy bags full of rocks. There's so much beauty, and it's ours, she thinks. They deserve to have their own slice of beauty. They worked for it. They've gotten old and tired, too tired to think or remember why they're together, where they're going, and why they're picking up rocks. All they do, joylessly, they pick up rocks. They pick up rocks. You ask about energy and how energy is taken. The stories for you from my heart. They pick up rocks.